to, but yeah, so we we do have to move on. That that is our strength, and that is something that we definitely want to focus our attention on that D line. Um, uh, but the one uh, glaring hole that we tried to address a year ago at this time, and we are still addressing it: linebackers. Come on, man. Middle linebacker in particular, we've had an issue. Look, and, and, and first and foremost, let's let's throw it out there. I'm not just doing this because he's my guy from North Carolina. Uh, but Mr. Cole Holcomb, year in and year out, even if he's the only one, is getting it done, constantly leads the team in tackles. Man, this guy is, is a monster on the field. I I, I feel so confident with him. The pro- problem is, what else do you have? Bostic proved he had issues. Our, our uh, Jamin Davis wasn't able to get it. You, you know, injuries, COVID. Will, what, it frustrates me. We were talking about this last year, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a major hole for us this year. This is a, we thought we were going to address it and, and we tried to address it and it did not work. Um, and they got to do something this year to, uh, because if you remember in that Dallas game, in Dallas, where we started some dude who like didn't even have his picture up or didn't even right. have that like profile on right. Sunday Night Football, like Dallas literally, literally would just be like, okay, where's that number 46? Here he is. All right, <laughs> running back, tight end, right to him, go run to him, go do an out. Yeah. Okay, there right. he is. And they, I mean, they just exploited him, you know? And, and, and by the time we got to our, our NFC East, you know, gauntlet of the schedule, our linebackers were decimated. They were done. And we weren't able, you know, and, and, and we were we were hopeless. Um, so yes, yeah, so you talk about Cole Holcomb and they're gonna move Jamin Davis outside. They tried to make him inside, it just didn't work out. So we got our two outside linebackers for next year. Um, they've signed David Mayo to come in and play okay. special teams, but they talk all about how much they liked when he came in for the, like, the last game or two of the season, they said how much Cole Holcomb played better. And how much the defense played better because they had that quarterback on the field putting everyone into place. Um, you know, so he's there not to get playing time, but for most special teams, but it shows how important this position is to us. Um, and then we also have uh, Buffalo Nickel Landon Collins still on the team, too. Yeah. Yes, and we do. He plays yes, we do. linebacker. He may not yep. know that he plays linebacker, right? <laughs> but he does. Yeah. Oh, he <laughs> um, definitely does. So you got to kind of have to factor, you know, where does he play into this? Um, and, and don't forget, we got John Bostic, who is on an expiring contract, but he was cheap before. Maybe you can bring him back to not play starter, but be a backup and, and, yeah. and stick around. But this has to be a position that we target, whether we pay money in free agency, whether we put high draft capital in it, maybe we do a combination of the two. Yeah. We have to do something. The only thing that kind of gets me, you know, I don't like today, I don't know, is you can really only have one middle linebacker. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like you can sign a wide receiver and draft a wide receiver. They can both play at the same time. You know, there's really only spot there, you know, one spot there one. to play. And yeah. the way the NFL is shifting with all of their, um, you know, with all the wide receivers and, and the, the packages, you know, your three tight ends are kind of more of a base package. You know, mm-hmm. or three linebackers, excuse me. And so it's I'm really curious when we get to free agency, what route are we going? Are we going towards a big money, you know, veteran upgrade, or are we going towards a high um, you know, draft pick? And and I've got some names, but that's just kind of like what I'm kind of I'm I'm really curious to see what direction we go here because like you said we have to upgrade that. Yeah, oh well one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And that I mean again. We said this, I know it sounds like a broken record, but we said this a year ago on this show at this time. We said this. We needed to address that hole at linebacker. We have still yet to do that. And, hey, I, like you, am still sitting here waiting. Hey, maybe this year at free agency we're going to do this. I honestly think second to quarterback, this is our biggest hole. You know what I mean? We need to fix this issue because we are giving up gashing runs and, 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 you know, anything across the middle because we're not able to stop that because of this position. And, and I'm, I'm very eager to let, let's talk about this one because we need to figure out where we're going to go from here. Cause 
is it all do is it just a thing where we go hit a couple linebackers in the draft and try them out or is it something where we we try to do like the quarterback let's get a solid proven linebacker a year ago we tried to look into a couple of those free agent guys we ended up not getting them but let me who did we try to uh Van Noy we tried to look into him we tried to you know but we uh, weren't able to get them so okay where do we go is it free agency is it the draft what do you think will so if we if we just start in free agency and look at the veteran route what is nice about this is um there are guys out there that can be an instant impact you know i agree with you where the you know quarterback is number one but and second being middle linebacker but there's not a lot of elite quarterback prospects out there right now for us right, to consider. Right. But there are for some linebackers. There's some big names out there. Yeah. You know, Kansas City just cut Anthony Hitchens. He's the you know yeah. on spot track um, with the, his contract is, is I believe the highest contract out there. But the Patriots, there's Dante Hightower out there um, mm -hmm. as well. Um, the the Saints, Quad Alexander had a huge impact year in and year out with you know with plays out there and even blitzes. He's a big a big time player. A guy we talked about last year um, on the Titans, Jayon Brown. We were hoping yeah. that he could be in, you know, and he got scooped up. You know, last year, some of these names we were talking about, other teams went and got them, but even before free agency started. Um, There's a name I got here. He played in Cleveland last year, and yeah. that, last year was his first year in Cleveland. And I, I saw this guy, and I was looking on spot track, and, you know, and I look at when I, for middle linebackers and stuff, like, you know they're going to get a lot of tackles. That's their role. But I look at how, who is who's playing a lot of snaps because that lets me know who's the quarterback of, of the defense because that's what we're looking for. And then I played NCAA 14. All Let's right? go. Let's go. <laughs> and, and I'm playing as the Minnesota Golden Gophers, my dad's yeah. alma mater. Okay. Let's go. And I'm in year like three or four of it. Okay. And this guy on Northwestern was making tackle after tackle out there and i'm like who is this guy why can my running back not get past him so his name is anthony walker anthony wow. walker jr and he yeah. played for cleveland last year and he had a big year huh. like he showed me like that's someone that i see out there where like obviously there's a lot of trust there he was there he was the anchor of their defense getting everyone lined up so so that's a name i already look at as well I got two okay. other lesser names and and your detroit folks need to chime in and tell me about this when they listen let's go I loved Gerard Davis out of Florida in the draft. And, and when Detroit picked him up, I thought he was going to be great. I don't know what happened there. You know, he went to the Jets this past year, but it just didn't turn out there. So, so I'd be curious as to what's, you know, what they know, but that he may not cost as much. And I'm interested in him. And then the other guy that I really liked, I know I've, I've rattled a lot of, of names, Oren Brooks from the, Oren Burks from the Packers. He came out of maybe was it Wake Forest I think as a as a, court, as a linebacker. He was yeah. a lesser known guy, second round pick, but he's a good little player. He can run, um, and so I'm looking for someone who can also um, you know have some speed there. So those are some lesser names, but there are some big names out there that we could really go out. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm I, honestly, uh, and Nathan sitting back here. He's saying, uh, "What about Chandler Jones?" That that's one of those big names that's out there. Um, this is Sid saying what a what a re -iron. Um look, honestly, I, I love I love some of the direction uh that you went into. Um I, one of the big names that I'm thinking about is Son Reddick. You know, if, if we can figure out a way to get him, I think he I mean he dominated this past year, and I really love what he brings to the table. Quan Alexander, I completely agree with that pick. Um Dante Hightower, the high tower, like I I'm like, dag on, you know, so there, I think this is definitely somewhere where we could go um, uh, to the free agency. Uh, I'm eager. To, I'm going to go back and look at Anthony Walker Jr. now, too, because I don't so, think so I were I, you were you focusing on, on just inside or are you also looking at potentially going outside and saying, like, hey, man, Jamin Davis, you're not a you're not an instant start. Because I, I did well, my focus on on inside. But, yeah, tell me what you were thinking. Well, see, yeah, see, that's the thing. I, I'm, I'm kind of, and, and I'm more looking at it as um, we are going to need to expand with how the offenses have been going and our outside guys that are more effective to the blitz. I want to kind of maybe do it rover because what we have is we know we have Landon Collins coming down. 
So that's taking somebody out of there. What what I want to do is I want to yeah I wanted to look at some of the outside guys as well that maybe can or maybe play a more of a hybrid role. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I, okay. look, yeah. So yeah. I, I I'm eager I'm eager to see uh, how some of these guys will potentially fit, um, and I like how some of their contracts work um, with us, man. But I. I I mean, I'm excited to look at this, man, because you look at some of these numbers, and I'm just kind of looking at um, the uh, spot track and just looking at some of these guys that are sitting here and available. Man, we this is we we need to make a move uh, this coming off scene to look at one of these um, linebackers. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Well, I think it's going to be interesting because I know we're going to talk about you know players in the draft, but. We're going to know very early when we talk on March 16th, which will be yeah. the, okay, free agency has happened. We're going to know what direction the draft's going to go in immediately because right. some of these guys were mentioned, they're going to be signing in the first two, three days to big deals. Right. And if one of those guys is here, okay, we'll probably not look at middle linebacker at number 11. Right. But if, say, we sign someone like we bring back John Bostic and we sign mm-hmm. someone like Reggie Ragland from, from the Giants, you know, and right. so we've got those veterans – now you could be – that opens up to, oh, wait, could we be going after Devin Lloyd from Utah? Mm-hmm. Could we be looking at N'Kobe Dean from, from Georgia? You know, are we now looking at a that. higher instant impact type player right. that we don't know yet, you know? And I think that's going to be huge. And, hey, you hey, let us right into uh, – or do you have anybody, any other free agents you're looking at? Yeah, you let us right into the draft. Right into the draft. And, I I mean, I'm absolutely – let's go right there. We have, you know, Ab – shout out to Ab. Ab said it. The 11th pick is just almost – pretty much just as good as the top 10 pick. So you have the potential to get a top-tier player. And right there, N'Kobe Dean, I I don't see – you know, honestly, if we're not going anywhere, I think we should need to go right there. I think that would be a solid – pick somebody that could come in potentially be a day one starter and be an impact player. You know what I mean? We saw what George did all year long. It's no question about it. And I definitely think that's somewhere I would go, but also you got a Devin Lloyd out there as well. That that plays pretty solid. And Hey, my guy out of Wyoming, baby, Chad, my, uh, Muma. Yeah, that's my dude, man. I'm telling you he's underrated. He's like a Josh Allen in this. I'm telling you, watch out. (laughs) Yes, yes. No. So like so I, I broke down my my four guys in the draft, my early picks and then late picks, like you were talking about. Your your early like Yo, first round. This is Ab. What up, Ab? Oh, he's in here all oh, just in time. <laughs> um so it's like, yeah, it's like you got your number eleven guys, which could be Devin Lloyd and Kobe Dean, or you've got your second, third round guys. Um I don't know why I heard today. Um I heard today that Dean is not worth the 11th overall pick. But honestly, you want to know what I thought of? I hate saying this. But I look at Dean and go, hey, look what Dallas did with Micah Parsons. Yeah. Look where they moved him and and made him a weapon out there. That's right. You know? Um, So I'd be good with it. You know, if we don't sign a big name veteran for it, I'd be good with Dean. You know, Lloyd or Dean with the 11th overall pick. Yeah. Then, if you look in the second, third round, you got Chad yeah. Muma from, from yeah. Wyoming. Ab is saying, is Muma worth an eleventh though? No, no, that, so no, I think, no, 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 no. No, you're looking at like the second, third round for for Muma, or I don't know this guy, okay? But I was listening to a podcast from the Senior Bowl, and once again, I tell you, you know, just like that Cameron Thomas guy, you know, from San Diego State, they yeah. said this guy from Montana State and Troy Anderson. Flashed I've at heard the of senior him. bowl as, yeah. as a as as a you know quite the player. So it's like if you get someone in free agency that's not costing a lot of money, and you go after this guy, and then you're making the transition from Montana State. Maybe he needs a year before he becomes Luke Keekley for Ron yeah. Rivera. But that, right. that could be a name that I look at. But hey, and shout out to Ab. Glad you're watching. Yo, it, how much of it also has to do with coaching? You know what I mean? Because we can get some of these guys and bring them in, and you know, but they still got to be able to be brought up the right way. So we also got to make sure we're focusing on coaching. Honestly, though, I am very excited at that pick. At you know, because Nicobe Dean, I, I, I've talked about him. That's my guy for this year. Like last year was what uh, 
Zay, uh, who was it last year that I was after? The linebacker from, not Akron, Tulsa. Yes, that, yes. The he guy went, who to, went uh, to the Cardinals. But yeah, the guy who went to the Cardinals. You know, this is my guy, Nicobe Dean. I've been watching him. I like what he has to offer, but my, my Momoa, Momoa that's, that, that dude from Wyoming, watch out, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out. So before we move on to, uh, to any other stuff that we've we got to talk about, you know, one of the guys we have right. and Landon Collins and how, oh, yeah. what do we do? How does he fit? Because if you, if you do cut him, you have the ability, it's, it's not the best thing in the world to cut him because you're not going to go, he, you know, he's costing like 15 million this year. Yeah, you yeah. don't just get a $15 million savings. Uh, because of the way the contract structure, these are still some of like his guaranteed years or his signing bonus. There's going to be dead money, so you're really only saving six to nine million if if you cut Landon Collins. Which I mean, six to nine million—that's another player. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wonder if they're going to put Jamin Davis on the outside and they're going to leave Cole Holcomb on the outside. Where does that? How, how does Landon Collins fit on the field if mm-hmm. you're going to do that? And, and I'm just wondering, you know, can we can we afford to keep him? You know, they're talking about they're going to get together with his agent and, and talk about restructuring his deal. But it's just like, how many snaps can we have? Is he going to be is he going to be happy with that? What do you think? Yeah. yeah. No, and, and, and I, honestly, I, I yeah, I think they need to take a look, look into that. Because especially if we spend the money to get an actual big name linebacker or an impact player that's actually going to do that role – then you know that cuts off one of your jobs because we're not you know we're not brought here because you're an excellent safety, you know what I mean? You're brought here more for your hybrid ability and the fact that you can be an impact player like that. But yeah, if we get somebody like hey, that's something I think we're gonna have to take a look at, man. Um, and and here's the thing: last year he was hurt. This year he got hurt through the season. He's able to come back, but if if health is gonna be an issue compared to getting a young guy or getting somebody else that we can have that can fill in and play, um, you know, that's going to, that's going to work against him. You know what I mean? We, I mean, Hey, like how he plays, like what, like um, what he does, but yeah, we're, if we're able to get somebody to fill in that, then yeah, he, he needs to prove, like we said earlier in the year, he needs to prove why he's in here, why he's getting the contract, you know, and, and, and ball up. And Hey, he's had, mo- he's had moments, you know what I mean? So I know it's like you can't you can't sit here and say like, oh well, we're moving Jamin outside, so Landon, you're going to get cut because it's like Landon made plays when, right, he, when he became right. that Buffalo nickel. Jamin Davis didn't make plays, so Nothing. it's like it's hard. <laughs> now I I got a scenario for you, Sean. And okay. I don't think you're going to like this. Uh oh. What if, what if, we restructure Landon Collins? All right, so he keeps he still has like three more years left on his contract. So we got him. He can play that Buffalo nickel. We draft someone mid round to develop with the idea of we let Cole Holcomb go at the end of the year. Oh, oh, Cole Holcomb's I let no get out of here because he's a free agent after this year. So do you let him go? Get it, but no, (laughs) no, you don't let him go at all. Well, but. And then bring him back potentially. Uh, like I'm not saying I'm not saying you cut him. You let him walk in free agency. You you know you move on without. I, I, him. I'm saying I'm not, I'm I don't like it. I'm, I'm not, just I'm just trying to think of ways to get people. In the- I'm always trying to retain my my Carolina players, but yeah, no, no, I I get what you're saying. Um, I just feel like that would be step. Well, it would depend on the situation. Honestly, and and I want us to resign him. That's somebody I'm focused on. But we'll see. We, uh, he says, "Will we saved almost seven mil with a cut slash to trade him?" Yes, um, that's significant. You know, yeah. that's something you've got to think about. That's a that is a yeah. impact player. It's you know probably a backup, but you could put that towards another position of guy guys that gets on the field. I said, I definitely hear you fellas, but I think 26 is a much better linebacker than a safety, but he only just started playing linebacker. I think it makes even uh, more strides this year. Could. I got an idea. 
what about this scenario? Yeah. And I love that. I love that Ab is, is responding in real time to this. So what if Landon's willing to do some type of restructure so we can keep him this year? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you do have Jamin Davis who they want to get on the field, but he is, he hasn't proven a whole lot. What if you keep Landon Collins, you see how things are going with Jamin, you mm-hmm. see how things are going with Landon, and he almost potentially becomes a trade option in the middle of next season before the deadline where you see, can we move on from him now? Have right. we proven that we've got what we can, we've got enough where like, cause I agree, uh, you know, Collins is better than, than Jamin right now, but there's a money factor in there. It's like, are right. we now safe to move on from him? Right. Right. And so that, so that's my, Hey, shout out to Brandon Spalletta hitting us, watching us, heard in, uh, heard in native, and uh, here's Ab right here saying, Sean, but you got to ask uh, this when you think about Holcomb. Can we get slash find better, though? And I think that's, yeah, that's the X factor. If we can't find a better uh, to fill in with eager, great, equal or greater value, yes, absolutely get rid of him. And then, I, you know, it still stinks. But, yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that um, because, yeah, comes down to dollar and cents, absolutely does. Yeah, and I will say this: I'm not, I'm not calling for cutting Landon Collins. I, I'll be a little disappointed. I do. I mean, as much as he loves Sean Taylor, you know, and I know when we got that contract, man, that was a lot of money we gave to him. But it ain't my money, so you know, what do I care? You know, he's on my team <laughs> right? now, so you know, so like, I don't, I'm not rooting for him to get cut. And then he did some really good things when he got moved to that linebacker Buffalo nickel, but. I just I just wonder is are they going to be able to keep him with this contract at where it is? Yeah, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna definitely uh, be an issue. So hey, free agency draft, we're looking there, but this is definitely something we need to figure out. What number, I mean, number two to number one is quarterback. Number two is linebacker. You know, 